Hello, developers. I'm Elif from the Android Toolkit and Jetpack engineering team, and today we're talking about all things Room. This past year was a big one for Room, and we're excited to share all the renovations we completed as we entered the Kotlin multi-platform world. And without further ado, let's step into the new and improved Room. If you're just getting started with Room, a little context. Room is an Android X library that makes it easier to use SQLite databases and apps by using its annotation processing APIs that generate code. Originally an Android-only library, we recently released the first Kotlin multi-platform version of Room, which supports JVM desktop and native in addition to Android. So how do we get started with Room KMP? Let's first go over how to get started with Room KMP for a brand new project. As always, the first step will be to set up your environment to be KMP friendly. For this, you will go on your build file and first configure your plugins. This means adding the Room Gradle plugin to help you manage your database schemas and adding the KSP plugin to the project because Room is also an annotation processor. To configure Room schemas in the Room Gradle plugin, you will also need to set up a schema export directory. Next up, you will need to set up your source sets. Because we'll be using Room in the common code of the KMP project, you will need to add the Android X Room runtime dependency. Note that KMP is available in Room version 2.7 alpha 1 or higher. Lastly, you will need to add dependencies to set up the Android X Room compiler, which is the KSP processor that generates code for Room. Room generates different code based on the platform, so you'll want to apply the KSP processor to all the targets that you want to support. Once your environment is set up, you will need to define your room classes. For example, you might love your pets so much that you want to build a pet database for them. This means that you'll need to define a dog entity, which represents a table in room, and a cat entity class, and annotate both with the at entity annotation. To perform queries on these entities of the room pet database, you will need to define special functions called DAO functions. These functions make it easy to not only perform queries on the database, but to receive the return query results in various return types, such as lists, maps, arrays, and so on. Here we add two simple insert functions and a select query. I should point out that the awesome part of queries written using the at query annotation is that Room is able to process any SQL query you provide, no matter how complex. But let's not deviate, that's a topic for another day. Now that we have our DAO functions, let's set up our database that will use these functions to access. To define the database, you will need to create an abstract pet database class that extends room database in the common source set of your shared KMP module so the database can be shared across all target platforms. Annotate the class with the add database annotation in which you will provide the dog and cat entities as well as set the database version. In the previous non-KMP versions of room, the database instantiation relied on reflection to access the database implementations generated by Room. This type of reflection is not possible in native. Therefore, in order to provide all target platforms access to the database implementation that will be generated by Room, you will need to annotate your Room database class with the at constructed by annotation and define a database constructor. This constructor will simply be an expect object that implements the room database constructor of type pet database. When defining your constructor, you should not implement the actuals yourself. Since the expect object is implementing a room database constructor, the room compiler will generate the actual implementations under the hood, making them available for all target platforms. Lastly, you will need to add a member function to access your pet DAO, and you have defined your database. Now we begin the KMP fun. You will need to select which SQLite driver you want to use. But wait, what are SQLite drivers? Well, the Android X SQLite library contains abstract interfaces along with basic implementations, which can be used to build your own libraries that access SQLite. Within this library, we created what we refer to as drivers, APIs that abstract over SQLite depending on the use case. These APIs closely follow the core functionality of SQLite C API. Out of the three drivers that we have, the bundled SQLite driver supports the most comprehensive list of target platforms. You can actually use these drivers standalone too, but in this video, we'll only talk about how you use them in Room. 
To use the bundled SQLite driver in your KMP project, you will need to add the relevant dependency to your common source set like this. The last step of the setup will be to configure and instantiate your pet database. You need to define a database builder to instantiate Room on each platform. This is the only part of the API that's required to be in platform-specific source sets due to the differences in file system APIs. For example, in Android, the database location is usually obtained through the context.getDatabase path. Similarly, for JVM Desktop, you just need to provide a database path. For the purpose of showing an example here, we have a temporary directory, but for your project, you should probably select a better one. To create the database instance in iOS, you will need to use iOS APIs to get the correct location info. Therefore, you will need to provide a database path using NS File Manager. The NS document directory is usually a suitable location for this purpose. Once you obtain the Room Database Builder from one of the platform-specific constructors, you can configure the rest of the Room Database in common code along with the actual database instantiation. A key step in the configuration process is to set the driver for the builder. And with that, you're ready to get started with your new Room KMP project. But what if you had an existing Android Room project and you want to use Room KMP? Well, then let's talk about how you can move an existing project to use the KMP version of Room. For starters, you will need to migrate away from using support SQLite APIs and to use SQLite driver APIs instead. This is a difficult task, but it can be done incrementally. Earlier, we mentioned that in order to use Room and KMP, a key step in the database instantiation is to set the bundled SQLite driver to be used. This is because without any driver set, Room is in what we refer to as compatibility mode, where it behaves like the version of Room that was pre KMP. This is especially helpful in incrementally migrating projects because in this compatibility mode state, you can still have support SQLite APIs in your project and run it on the Android target platform, giving you the flexibility to migrate your project in small increments. However, once you set the driver, anything using support SQLite APIs will fail as Room will switch to the KMP version and expect your entire project to be KMP compatible. So what kind of usages of support SQLite should you be on the lookout for in this migration? Well, when using Room, you may have some scenarios in which you might need to interact with the database a little more directly. In the pre-KMP version of Room, one of these ways of interacting with the database more directly was through the Open Helper API, where you could get a writable or a readable support SQLite database. In Room KMP, the Open Helper APIs will need to be replaced with the Use Writer Connection and Use Reader Connection APIs, which utilize the SQLite connection as a replacement for the support SQLite database. Similarly, all other usages of support SQLite database and cursor will need to use SQLite connection and SQLite statement APIs instead. Another case where you will have support SQLite database usages that you'll need to migrate will be in various callback overrides, such as this migration example. Lastly, Room also has some convenience APIs, such as the database transaction APIs for the support SQLite database that also need to be migrated. For transaction APIs, we use the Use Writer connection, as well as the Use Reader connection APIs that we mentioned earlier, which are equivalent to getting the writable database and readable database from the Open Helper API. In addition to the migration to the driver APIs, you will also need to migrate your project to use coroutines. If your app is already using coroutines, that's great news and you can skip this step. But if not, this is gonna be the first big leap you'll need to take for your app and you might need to introduce some interoperability. This is not an easy task and the challenge really depends on what the current state of the app using Room is. In contrast to the Android only version, the KMP version of Room relies on coroutines to perform I.O. operations on the configured coroutine context. In the scope of Room, this means that you need to migrate any blocking DAO functions to suspend functions. Another example is some reactive types, such as live data, are not KMP compatible and must be migrated to coroutine flows. For more information on migrating to coroutines, check out our Android Developer Coroutines Guide. Another key step you will need to take is to move your Room declarations to common source sets. Most importantly, your database definition will need to add a few additional elements that we went over earlier. Due to the previously mentioned blocker regarding not having access to generated classes for the native target, you will need to annotate your Room database class with the at constructed by annotation 
and provide a pet database constructor class. You will also need to move the database class to your common source set. As we mentioned earlier, when talking about coroutines, a big change to look out for is that the KMP version of Room does not allow having blocking DAO functions in the common source set. A strategy you may want to use in this scenario is to define a separate DAO interface to be a common expect interface to house your blocking DAO functions only, place the actual in the Android source set along with the blocking DAO functions, have an empty actual DAO in the other target platform source sets, and only keep the supported DAO function types in the common DAO. Lastly, you will need to configure your Room database. As we mentioned earlier, the key point in this step is to remember to set the driver. For a fully KMP database, you will need to use the bundle SQLite driver as shown here. It's important to mention again that once the driver is set, then all the support SQLite APIs that may remain in your project will no longer work. This is the final step in the migration process to Room KMP. And with that, you're done. Your project is now using the KMP version of Room, and it's definitely easier said than done. Once again, I'm Elif from the Android Toolkit and Jetpack Engineering team, and thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all things Android. See you in the next video.